In this video, we're going to use the normal as an approximation to a binomial. And remember, a binomial is a discrete probability distribution where you have distinct items, one, two, three, and there's no other option to be in between them. So they're kind of like putting little rectangles together. So for example, this right here, they're saying, hey, in order for us to find the whole 152, we have to go 0.5 to the left of 152 and 0.5 to the right of 152 and we create a box and it's a certain probability, a certain height, right? And that's the representative of 152 versus on a normal, which is a continuous distribution, we'd go all the way to the edge of that 151.5 and then to the right would be greater than 151.5 and, and that would be including 152 on the binomial because that edge of that binomial is 151.5. So binomial is discrete and little rectangles whereas the normal graph is uh, continuous data and we want to take this normal graph and approximate this binomial discrete data. So let's first do a problem in the binomial. Compute the probability here using the binomial formula. Okay, let's do that in StatCrunch. I'll open StatCrunch here and go to Stat Calculator Binomial. Put in our n value, 43.4 and 12, and it wants it equal to 12, so we gotta change that to equal to 12 and compute. Now you'll notice our little rectangle graphs, right? There's exactly 12, and the probability of hitting exactly 12 is 0 0.03413. Now we'd like to do a normal approximation to that data, but in order to do that, we're going to need a mean and a, and a standard deviation. Okay, so the formula to do that is mu is equal to NP, and the standard deviation is the square root of NPQ. All right, so we find the mu is equal to n43 times the p, which is 0.4, 17.2, and our standard deviation square root of 43 times 0.4 times 0.6. 2nd square root, 43 times 0.4 times 0.6. Remember the Q is just the 1 minus P, so they both add up to 1, right? 0.4 and 0.6. Okay, 3.212, We'll go out a little bit. All right, so there's our standard deviation and mean. Now, I should have probably checked this first, to even see if we can use this, the normal approximation on here. It says, can the normal distribution be used? Okay, well, this is a Sullivan problem for statistics, and you have to satisfy NP times one minus P is greater than or equal to 10, or NPQ is greater than or equal to 10. So we'll just do that, 43 times 0.6 times 0.4. If that's greater than or equal to 10, which it is, just barely, you can do a normal approximation. In other books, like Triola, it's NP is greater than or equal to 5. So 43 times 0.4, and then 43 NQ also has to be greater than or equal to 5. You have to have both conditions met, and then it's true. So for Triola, NP greater than or equal to 5, and NQ also does have to be greater than or equal to 5. And in Sullivan, you have this formula right here. So it, it is true, so we can use the normal approximation to a binomial. Okay, and this is my mean I'm going to use, and this is my standard deviation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab StatCrunch, going to go and open up a stat calculator and normal because we're doing a normal approximation. We're going to put in our values that we have now. The mean is 17.2. The standard deviation is 3.21248. And again, we want equal to 
12. Okay, let's talk about that for a moment. We don't have an equal to here. Okay, so we do have a between, which is going to save us a lot of time. But let's go over here and look at this graphic. If we want something, say, the probability of one number, like we want the probability of 12 here, then we have to look at that rectangle. It's a certain rectangle, and it's a finite number, so it goes up that whole spot, and the number is 12 in the middle, and it goes half, 0.5 to the left and 0.5 to the right. That's what this is saying. So in order to find that rectangle, you have to be a left bound of 0.5 below the 12, and you have to be a right bound of 0.5 above the 12. So if we wanted 12, it would be 11.5 to 12.5. That is one unit, right? And that's what we're looking for, one unit. 12.5 minus 11.5 is one unit. And so that's the in-between, or saying one value. You have to do an in-between. And luckily StatCrunch now did the in-between before it didn't have that. Just skipping down here, if you had a strict less than sign, so if you wanted to go less than 12, if I changed it back, less than 12, I would need to go up and grab that half, 12.5, right? I need to go 0.5 to the right, and so you get that whole rectangle, and then you can go left with the, with the normal distribution. If you wanted to go greater than 12, I wouldn't be at 12.5, I would be at 11.5. I have to grab that left portion, go down a half a unit to get the whole rectangle. Think about the whole rectangle. And then again, the in-between. So you can go in-between numbers just like we did. We're doing 11.5 to 12.5, but you can go in-between any two numbers. You just got to make sure on the left one you're going down a half, and on the right you're going up a half. Okay, so here's my exactly 12. Compute, point three or excuse me, 0 0.3372, point zero three three seven and point zero three four one. This is an approximation to this number. It says by how much do the exact and approximate probabilities differ? And it looks like they differ by point zero 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 five if you had it all out. So they don't differ by that much. It's a good approximation, right? So let's try one more. Okay, here's one from Triola. And so it's showing that if NP is greater than or equal to 5 and NQ is also, then we'll estimate this with a, these values here. So let's just quickly check that. Our N is 13. N times uh, 0.6. Yep, greater than 5. So 13 times 0.4. Greater than 5, just barely. All right by using the normal distribution. If it's not, then state that you can't use it and it's not suitable, but it is, okay? This one says probability of fewer than seven. Okay, fewer than seven. Not equal to seven, but fewer than seven. All right, so let's go over here, grab our normal approximation tool, our normal calculator, and put in our mean. Oh, we need to calculate the mean first. So let's go calculate the mean. Here's our formula. NP, N is 13 times P, which was 0.6, we already did it, I guess, 7.8. And our standard deviation, the square root of N, 13, P, 0.6, Q, times 0.4, 1 minus P, remember, and then hit enter. Stat crunch, put in the standard deviation, 1.7663521731. You might as well put it all in. Not, we're not finding an in-between anymore. We're finding a standard, so I'm going to switch it. And now we're finding fewer than 7, so we have to go less than or equal to what? If we put 7 in, if it's equal to 7, that's not going to be right, is it? Because I don't want to be equal to 7. I don't want that rectangle, okay? or even 7.5, getting the whole rectangle. I don't want that whole rectangle. I just want to take 6 or lower for the discrete. And now if I'm taking 6 or lower, and I'm going on a less than, I'm going to have to add 0.5 to it to get that whole box of 6. So I put in a 6.5 here. 
and I click compute and I'm getting my answer 0 0.2308 round the 8 up to a 9. It's very important when you're doing these problems for the approximating the binomial you remember that it's a rectangle and you have to add or subtract a 0.5 to your x values otherwise they'll be off. All students on the test always do this look how far it's off. It's way off. It's not even close. 6.5 because you're doing you're doing like half of five when you're doing that actually. Okay? All right. Questions and discussion.